Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those who've supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I am unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. Last Saturday, I reviewed my first non-Safari Lamy in this Lamy Studio Palladium with a 14 karat gold oblique medium nib. It has its good and not so good points, but it's still inked up and I'm enjoying writing with the smooth oblique nib. When I ordered this Lamy Studio on Christmas Day, I also ordered this Hongdian 525, which I thought looked a lot like the Lamy Studio and I was interested in doing a comparison. I had only ever used one Hongdian fountain pen before, and that was this Hongdian 920 in white with rose gold colored trim that I bought for my wife for Christmas. Actually, to review this pen, I had to steal it off her desk. She loved it so much. And it's going right back on her desk after I finish this introduction or I won't get my omelet for breakfast this morning. The Hongdian came from China a full month before the Lamy Studio came from Germany. And now that I've reviewed the studio, it's time to see if a slim, steel-nibbed Chinese pen that is a tenth the price of the Lamy is any competition at all because you know, inquiring minds want to know right now. In my new pen year resolutions uh, video, I said that I was going to endeavor to get myself a Lamy fountain pen. And uh, so I did. I actually ordered a Lamy Studio uh, Palladium uh, fountain pen. And I probably won't see it till February now. In the meantime, I was looking around at the new Hongdian. I just reviewed a Hongdian uh, 920 that I uh, purchased for my wife for Christmas. And I was very impressed with it. And uh, I looked at some of their other models. And there's a 520 model that looks very similar in style to the Lamy Studio. So I thought, well, it'd be interesting to have that pen up against the uh, Lamy Studio to do a comparison. It looks like the Hongdian has come in first. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. And here is the pen. And we have some crinkly plastic wrap to play with. Shiver, shiver, shiver. Looks very nice. This is in a, a deep kind of navy blue. And it has that kind of frosted enamel over metal. I'll clean that out. We'll do a review. Now, before I get started with the Hongdian 525, I just want to update you viewers that I now have uh, these ink buddies for these uh, ink samples are available on James's Etsy site. But I've also updated this one for 30 milliliters uh, diamine bottles of ink so that it actually fits the bottles now. So those are available for sale on James's site as well. Um, in addition to uh, the little ink buddies that will take a Robert Oster, these Robert Oster 50 milliliter bottles. And I'll put a link in the description uh, to the Etsy store where you can purchase those items. And what I'd like to do today in addition is go over the parts and features of this fountain pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And after the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. I mentioned in the introduction that I had bought this Hongdian 525 because I thought it resembled the Lamy Studio Palladium um, that I just recently reviewed, uh, and I wanted to compare them. Of course, I hadn't held either of these pen models in my hands, so I was going by photographs which seems to be the only thing you can do these days. But now that I finally have them both in my possession, the similarity between these two pens is very slight indeed. The Lamy is much thicker and a much heavier pen than the Hongdian, which is very light and almost insubstantial in my hand. 
There are some other similarities, however, especially if you compare this to some of the non-Palladium model of studios. This powder-coated Wedgwood blue finish of the Hongdian seems to be closer to some of these powder-coated versions of the studio. Uh, and except for the shiny chrome section on the studio, which is different to this uh, brushed aluminum section that we'll see here in a moment, they do look similar. The Hongdian 525 comes in four colors, purple, coffee, green, and blue. And they have two different nib options, an extra fine at 0.4 millimeters, and what they call a small bent nib at 0.6 millimeters. I chose the small bent nib to find out if it is similar to other mini Fude nibs that I'm fond of, like on my Pen BBS fountain pens. I have that small upturned tip, mini Fude, and even on this Moonblanc P135, which is a number five size nib with that small upturned mini Fude style nib, which I've found to be very pleasing indeed. But let's look at the pen. Overall, it is a very light and slim pen in a very nice Wedgwood blue, which I mentioned is a very resilient powder coat that should resist scrapes and scratches. It also resists fingerprints and it has shiny chrome hardware. From the top, we see a flat top tapering finial that secures a simple and elegantly styled clip that has the Hongdian logo at the tip. The clip is very springy and very usable. The cap tapers up slightly to about here where it begins to straighten out and then there's a seamless transition to the barrel. And we have Hongdian and the model number silk screen painted onto the back of the cap. The barrel tapers back down again to a flat chrome end finial which mirrors the look of the cap finial. The cap snaps off to reveal a long tapering brushed aluminum section and a very small number five size steel nib. This section is interesting not only because it's textured with this brushed aluminum in contrast to the anodized metal of the Studio Palladium and the shiny chrome of the other Studio models, but also because the brushed aluminum is brushed horizontally or on a swirl kind of a pattern rather than vertically in line with the uh, length of the pen. This makes the grip even more grippy, if that's the word, and is very pleasant to the touch. There's a very slight step down to that uh, section and that's not sharp at all. It's so thin a step, you don't feel it. And there's a small chrome ring uh, towards the end of the section and that nib and a small lip right there, which is part of the snap capping mechanism. Here's the Lamy Studio right next to it. And you can see, although there is a size difference there, the design of that little ring is very similar indeed. Let's take a closer look at this nib. As I said, it's very small, even for a number five. I confirmed that it is, in fact, a number five size nib by measuring the feed with my calipers. And the feed is five millimeters in width at the base. That's how you can tell the size of the nib from the width of the feed at the base. But if we put this number five steel nib against the number five steel nib of my Visconti Van Gogh, you can see that uh, the Van Gogh is much bigger. And here it is up against the number five size nib of my Faber-Castell. Again, a small nib, but uh, it makes it look huge next to the Hongdian. But the Hongdian is so much better than this Faber-Castell piece of crap that I fought with for years now. But that's another story. I was a colonel in the Paul Legion. Was that before or after you were a professor at economics? No, in between there was a croupier, Monte Carlo, but that's another story. The nib has some very deeply engraved filigree work, which forms sort of a cartouche around some very nicely scripted letters that say 1997 Hongdian Lanchian Li Lishui, I think that's the way you pronounce it. And what appears to be the word mouse at the bottom there. Can you help me? Can you turn this thing off? Why would I turn it off? 
It's my favorite show. Nobel, you can't leave me! Talk to the butt. How about where are you going? Oh, I've got to stare at traffic, yawn, lick myself. And believe me, that could take hours if you do it right. I can't figure out that last word, really. But Hongdian is just a brand name given to the Zhejiang Lishu Lacian Pen Company that has been an OEM pen maker for many of the world's pen brands since 1997 and is better known as Hero. The nib and feed are part of a collar assembly that unscrews uh, very easily. In fact, here is a, uh, a photograph of the pieces as I disassembled them when I cleaned the pen. And while we're here, let's look at the profile of that upturned nib on the pen BBS, which is on the bottom and the Hongdian on the top. You'll see it's much more pronounced on the Hongdian than it is on the pen BBS. The section unscrews to reveal the Lamy style and sized uh, converter that's included. And the pen will accept Lamy long, Parker long, and two Parker short cartridges piggybacked. The inside of the cap shows a plastic liner which incorporates the snap cap mechanism. The cap posts deeply and securely when you really press it. So they used, nah, you can pull it off again. So they used that little lip on the end of the section for the snap cap mechanism like that, but they didn't use it on the end finial uh, like it is on the Lamy Studio. Now, I find that odd because that would have secured the end of that cap really nicely. Now, it actually does adhere to that end and you're not going to drop it off of there. But if you just cap it like that, it falls off. So you have to push it to make it uh, post securely. So obviously that end finial piece of metal is pushing into that plastic rather than snapping into it with that small lip that's on the section. So I don't know why they didn't use that snap cap mechanism on the back of that pen. Lawsuit perhaps? I kind of doubt it. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with and is nicely balanced, very light. Um, and it's balanced both ways. I bought this pen from Bobby's eBay store, Office Supplies Pen, and paid $14.95 US with $2 US shipping. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Hongdian 525 with a Lamy Studio Palladium, a Moon Blanc, sorry, Moon Man P135, a Wing Sung 601, and a Faber Castell Loom. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And you can see that the Lamy Studio Palladium is a bit girthier pen, and it's certainly a more hefty pen than the 525 is. And these two nibs, the Moon Man and the Hongdian number five, seem to be about the same size, and they have that same bent nib to them. Even though this uh, is a hooded nib, that is a tubular nib on the end, and has that bobby bent kind of configuration, so it's a mini few day as well. And this is an upgraded section on that Wing Song 601. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper as always and this is the Hongdian Hongdian 525 and it is a fine mini fude steel nib Let's check the wetness. It's uh, relatively wet, but I think this is a very dry ink. Uh, and the ink is 
sailor. Sue Boku. That's what I'm going to say. Sailor Suboku. And here's the swatch for the Sailor Sobuku with um, Colorverse Proxima B. Proxima Centauri's the nearest star. The celestial bodies that follow are Alpha Centauri A, Toli, Barnard Star, Wolf 359, BL Seti, UV Seti, Ross 154, Ross 248, Proxy on A. Oh, darn, that's wrong. <laughs> And some Robert Oster Gray Seas. So this nib is very smooth. I have done nothing to this nib since I inked it up and it wrote the first time. And we're getting a bit of a thicker line horizontally than we are vertically. And if you use it straight up and down you get an even thinner line but at normal writing angles this line in my Richard Binder uh, chart is a 0.5 millimeter which comes out as a, a Western fine and a Japanese Uh, medium fine. This nib is very familiar. Here is the Moonman P135 and that writing experience with that thicker line this way and thinner line that way is very similar. They may look a little different but they behave exactly the same. And as to line variation, well that's no pressure that's a little bit of pressure but this is very stiff and it's very stiff Chinese steel that you wouldn't expect to flex at all besides you're getting some character out of this line anyway and for our quote And for reverse writing, it's very scratchy and very thin. I would think that with having the nib straight up and down, you get a thin line that's fairly dry, not too scratchy, and I would use this nib in that fashion rather than reversing it. And some quick writing. not bad at all no skips very wet so what do i like and what do i not like about this fountain pen i got this fountain pen to find out if a 15 dollar chinese pen might be any match for a 160 dollar german fountain pen pound for pound dollar for dollar to be clear the hongdian 525 could not be characterized as a copy or a clone of the lamy studio in any way at all there is a vague similarity in shape and some of the colors uh, available in the standard studio models but the similarity ends there this pen is way too slim for my personal preferences but it is well balanced with a nicely textured section a super smooth nib that has lots of character takes Lamy and Parker cartridges posts nicely and is only $15 you could get all four pens for $60 US the finish seems tough and scratch resistant so you could throw this in your purse your satchel your bag with your keys and not worry about it I like the color range available as you get one of each color and match inks with them and have them on your office desk in a good range from coffee colored brown to green blue and purple all that's missing is a black one 
but you might be interested in the Hongdian Black Forest for your black ink, as it is a really cool looking stealth pen with a black Fude nib. Or you could get the black version of the 920. What don't I like about the pen? Well, just the size really. The number 5 nib is already rather small, but this one is on the small side even for a number 5. The pen doesn't feel as solid as this Hongdian 920 uh, that I gifted my wife. And I can't exactly say what it is, but the metal feels, I don't know, lighter and thinner the way these le uh, metal threads move together. And it's uh, rougher than on the 920, which is odd because both of these pens are the same price. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant messages whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.